First of all, I want to remind each and every one of us that our, that our attitude towards the Word of God determines the place that God holds in each and every one of our daily lives. And of course, the title of the text this evening is The Living Word. Because you see, the Word of God, the Word of God should always be our Father speaking to us. It should be as real to us as though our Father is standing in the very midst of us and speaking to us. In John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus said, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and he will come unto him, and make our abode with him. In other words, our home with him. Those words that Jesus spoke should be as personal to us as though we were the only one in the world. As though when he went to that cross, we were the only ones in this world. And my dear people, he would have still gone if we were the only one. It is as though we are sitting at the very feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he looks down into our face and says, The Father and I will come and make our home with you. In Joshua, you remember in Joshua, in the book of Joshua, we talked about Joshua last week. But in Joshua chapter 8 verse 1, the Word of God says, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed, for I am thy God. I am your strength. I am your ability. We can whisper in our hearts. In Philippians 4.19, the Word of God says, But my God shall supply all of our needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Because you see, the living Word is alive. He is real. And He is our Father. You know, few words of any man, any human being, rarely seldom ever even survive a generation. And yet, God's Word is impregnated with the very life of God. It is eternal. It is alive. alive. If you look up the word, word in the Greek, talking about the Word of God, there's two, two meanings, logos and rhema. Logos is the written word. Is the written word. And then we have rhema. We've all heard the name rhema. Rhema is, means the spoken word. What is rhema? That is where a word is like it jumps off the page and speaks to your spirit. Or it may speak to you through the Holy Spirit. But it's a spoken word. <clears throat> well, my dear people, we are combating demons and disease with the word of God. Why? Because the word of God is the sword of the spirit. The word of God can slay disease and the word can heal the sick. The disciple, how many disciples we got in here? That's right, amen. The disciple who walks by faith in the word requires no evidence of the senses. Do you remember I was talking about sense knowledge? What we see or what we hear. So the disciple, the, the disciple who walks in true faith uh, in the word requires no evidence of the senses, of sense knowledge of what we see or what we hear. And it's very important in the times that we are entering into. At the times that, that we are entering into. And you need to keep that on the forefront of your thoughts. At the time frame that we are within the kingdom of God. We are coming into the very, very end of the church age. This is the generation that he's going to use. We are a part of that strategy. We are a part of the army of God <coughs> that he's going to use. We are the servants that he's going to use. And so this is one of the reasons why I believe he's teaching us the things he's teaching us and wants to show us. Because you see, sense, knowledge, faith, what we see and what we hear demands physical evidence to satisfy the senses before we can see, for instance, that we are healed or, or for what we have prayed for. 
He tries sense knowledge tries to remove your faith. But you see, true faith depends upon the Word of God alone. True faith stands upon the Word of God alone. And we've got to get a hold of that. We don't go by what we see. We don't go by what we hear. We don't go out this door and see 25 foot high walls that are 20 foot thick. We don't see them. What do we see? The Word of God. We see the Logos, which is a written Word of God, and we hear the Rhema, which is a spoken Word of God, and that's what we go by. Nothing else. We find a scripture that covers our need and we make it ours. That's what I like about the scripture keys for kingdom living. That's what I like about it. <laughs> the enemy comes in like a flood. We come right back at him like a flood. My dear people, prayer based upon the word of God rises above sense knowledge and contacts the very throne room of God. Prayer based upon the Word of God rises above sense knowledge, what we see and what we hear, and it contacts the very throne room of God. In John's Gospel 10.10, 10, and we're going to get into the Word here in a minute. In John's Gospel chapter 10, verse 10, the Word of God says, The thief cometh not, but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Who's he talking about there? He's talking about the enemy. <clears throat> in the words of Jesus, the thief. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So my dear people, if we are not having life and having it more abundantly, then the thief has come. The thief has come. If we are not walking in the kingdom of God in His abundance, the thief has come. In the words of Jesus, he, Jesus Christ Himself says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now who's He talking about there? He's talking about us. He's talking about us. <clears throat> so let's look at, let's turn to the Word of God. Let's look here in Isaiah chapter 14. Because what we're going to do this evening is we're going to look at the strategies of the thief. Because you see, it is the thief that comes. <clears throat> it's the thief that comes, and he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So what we're going to begin with is we're going to look at the strategies of the enemy. So if you would turn with me please to Isaiah chapter 14, beginning in verse 12. It's Isaiah 14, beginning in verse 12. This is talking about Lucifer when he has fallen out of heaven, he was cast out of heaven. Verse 12. How art thou fallen... From heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which did weakest weaken the nations? There was the nations that follow him. Verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. Who's that talking? <clears throat> Satan. Lucifer. Our enemy. The thief. The prince and the power of the air. The author of sickness and disease. The thief cometh not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. <clears throat> so what are his strategies? How does he do it? How does he operate? And that's what we're going to show you this evening because we are going into a big battle. We are participants of the war of all wars. It is a spiritual war and God is equipping us <coughs> every which way <coughs> that he can. So first of all, he's giving us the strategies here of the enemy. First of all, if you notice, the enemy was trying to exalt himself above God. He was trying to exalt himself above God. What did he say? He says, I will ascend into heaven. I will sit also upon the mount. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And I will be like the most high. 
So you see, Satan, Lucifer, the thief, what he tries to do is to exalt himself above God. That's how he operates. My dear people, his strategies have not changed one bit. Turn with me, please, to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Now I'm going to bring it down to our very, our personal lives. How he operates in our personal lives. Chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning in verse 3. Second Corinthians chapter 10, beginning in verse 3. The Word of God says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war in the flesh. In other words, for although we walk in this body, or though we walk in the natural, we do not war after the flesh, after in this body, or in the natural. Why? Because we are in a spiritual war. We are in a spiritual war. In other words, for we don't walk in the flesh, in other words, we do not walk in the sense knowledge you still with me but what we see or what we hear verse 4 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal in other words they are not of the flesh but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds now the, the word strongholds is referring to you know where strongholds are at they're in the mind they're in the mind the enemy <coughs> builds strongholds around our minds over a period of years brick by brick. And he builds these strongholds around our minds brick by brick and first thing you know we don't even realize that they're there. We don't even realize that we're there. We even actually protect those strongholds with reasonings and pride. It's a double wall <clears throat> just like they build houses in this country. Two walls. Reasoning and pride. Okay. But what he's showing us here is, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, they are not of the flesh, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The strongholds are in the mind. Verse 5. Casting down imaginations. The word imaginations also means reasonings. The word imagination also means sense knowledge. Where are those imaginations at? They're in the mind. They're in the mind. Th those imaginations are how Satan builds strongholds. Casting down imaginations, okay, now, <coughs> are thoughts. Thoughts. And every high thing, there's the enemy, high thing, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. See the enemy there? What's the enemy doing? He is exalting himself against the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? The Word of God. The Word of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So in other words, what we see here, I'll go back, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not of the flesh. They are not of the body but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, strongholds of the mind, casting down imaginations, or in other words, uh, 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 thoughts, reasonings, sense knowledge, what we see, what we hear, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. In other words, every high thing that exalted itself against the word of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In other words, bring into captivity every thought to the word of God. Are you still with me? I'll go back over it again. Cast, you know what he's saying, cast down imagination, cast down reasonings, cast down thoughts, cast down that sense knowledge and every high thing that tries to exalt itself against the word of God. Bring it into captivity. What? Every thought to what? To the word of God. You still with me? Okay. You see, the enemy has the same strategies in our lives that he had when he was cast out of heaven. He tried to exalt himself above God. He said, I will ascend into heaven. I will uh, ascend into the heights of the cloud. In other words, he tries to exalt himself above God. And what he does to now is he exalt, tries to exalt himself through the thought process, through the sense knowledge, and tries to exalt himself 
above the Word of God. Above the Word of God. You say, how does he do that? Well, look at Isaiah 14, 16. Go back to Isaiah again. Isaiah 14, 16. <laughs> they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? Now, do you know how he made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? He's a deceiver. He is a deceiver. He is a father of lies. So the enemy comes at us and he, he deceives us. How? Through the thought processes. He deceives us. Uh, how? And here you have the battle. Lies versus truth. What is the truth? The Word of God. The Word of God. The Word of God is the only truth there is. Satan will tell you, you've got cancer. The Word of God says, I'm healed. And which is the truth? Which is the truth? I am healed. You see? We don't go by what we see or what we hear. We go by the Word of God. And that's the reason why the Word of God says to continually renew our minds to the Word of God. Why? Because Satan, Lucifer, the thief, is a deceiver. And he lies. He's the father of all lies. And he comes at us with his lies. Now, he tries to deceive us. Why does he try to deceive us? How does he try to deceive us? First of all, he tries to deceive us by what we see and hear through sense knowledge. You still with me? Through sense knowledge. He tries to get us to throw away our faith and confidence in God and His Word. He tries to get us to throw away our faith and confidence in God and His Word. How does He do that? <clears throat> when you walk out the door, you see 25-foot walls. And 20-foot thick walls. Instead of, I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. The truth. Okay. How does he do that? Through thoughts. Fiery darts. Paul calls them fiery darts. We're going to look at that in just a minute in Ephesians chapter 6. Their thoughts. They're fiery darts. Their thoughts. They're fiery darts. Their vain imaginations. Their reasonings. Their lies. He from the deceiver. Thoughts. Fiery darts. Reasonings. He tries to get the believer. He tries to get the disciple to throw away their faith in God's Word. How? By exalting himself above the Word of God by what we see or what we hear. Still with me? Okay. That's the reason why the Word of God says walk by faith and not by sight. Walk by faith and not by sight. Walk by the Word and by not what you see. Go by what the Word of God says. Example. Let me give you an example here. <coughs> Fear is a total opposite of faith. Now, there's a difference between fear that comes from the devil and the fear of the Lord. When we read, read the Word of God, it says fear of the Lord. That means fear. When you hear fear of the Lord, that means like when we were children, we were, had fear, a fear of getting out of our Father's shadow. And if you look it up in the Greek, that's exactly what it means. Or in the Hebrew, it means the fear of getting out of the Father's shadow. That's what he means when he says fear of the Lord. All right? But then, fear from the enemy paralyzes people. Absolutely paralyzes people. I've seen them to where they couldn't get up out of a chair because of their fear. So much in fear, they can't get up out of a chair. That's what the enemy comes at us when you want to witness. It's a fear. He shuts your mouth. He paralyzes it. That's right. God is showing us the strategies and how He works, how He operates. Why? So that we will be victorious. Don't sit here and wait for God to do it. God's waiting on us. 
He's waiting on us. It's true. You better believe it. Fear is the opposite of faith. It is the total opposite. It operates in very much the same manner as does faith, but it brings the about opposite results. For instance, fear paralyzes people. That's why the enemy's number one weapons is fear. He paralyzes people with it. But all it is, if you think about it, is a thought. What is it? It's a thought. What is it? It's a fiery dart. Paul calls it a fiery dart. Boy, he really brings it out. <clears throat> it's a thought. It's a fiery dart. It's fear. And what does it do? When that fiery dart hits you, that thought hits you, bang, it paralyzes you. It paralyzes us. But you see, faith is our confidence in the truth of God's Word. Faith is our confidence in the truth of God's Word. Say that with me. Faith is our confidence in the truth of God's Word. That's right. But you see, fear is our belief in the lies of the devil. You see the difference? Faith is our confidence in the Word of God. Truth. Fear is our belief in the lies of the devil. Faith is the assurance or substance of things hoped for. Fear is the substance of things which are not desired. Two total opposites. But the Lord tells us to renew our minds to the Word of God. That's why he's saying renew your minds, to remove our minds to the Word of God. Why? So that we will begin to walk totally in the light of His Word. His living Word. Turn with me please to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Thank you, Father. This gets gooder and gooder. <laughs> gooder and gooder. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4. I'm going to begin with verse 4. Actually, I'm going through 4 through 9. The Word of God says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. In other words, he's saying in the verse sentence of verse 6, he's saying, Be careful for nothing. In other words, he says, Don't fret. Don't worry. Don't fret. Don't worry. Verse 7, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Our heart is our spirit, my dear people. Heart and spirit in the Word of God are synonymous. It means the same virtually. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts, our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. What will? The peace of God? If what? If we're careful for nothing? If we don't worry? If we don't worry? Then he says in verse 8, Finally, brethren, he's talking to us, he said, Whatsoever things are true. What's true? The Word of God. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue in, and if there be any praise, think on these things. And what do we think at? We think with our minds, don't we? All right. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. So he's telling us, he's telling us to renew our minds to the word of God and to think on his things. Then what happens to us? The peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep our hearts, which is our spirit, and minds through Christ Jesus. Do you realize that we actually have to learn to stop worrying? Think about it. We actually have to learn to stop worrying. Hmm? We have to learn how to stop not worrying. We've been trained so well by the enemy. 
But you know what worry is? Let me tell you what worry is. It's meditation from the enemy's camp. It's meditation from the enemy's camp. Because what does it do? It negates God's word. It's total opposite of God's word. Think about it. It negates God's word. What is he doing? It's a strategy. He's exalting himself above the word of God. See? How many of us have walked the floor all night with worry? Huh? They've all done it. Now you know it's not from God. Look at the fruit. Ha! All you got was baggy eyes. Huh? You see? But you realize that we've done it for so many years that we actually have to learn how to stop worrying. We have to learn how. You see? That's the reason why the Word of God continually tells us, renew your mind to the Word of God. Renew your mind to the Word of God. Because you see, worry is meditation from the enemy's camp. But what is that worry? It's sense knowledge. It's sense knowledge. You see? My dear people, we are not to act on sense knowledge. In other words, we are not to act on what we see or hear. We are to act upon the Word of God. We are to act upon the Word of God. And my dear people, when we, when we get to the point, when we get to the point that our minds renewed because what the Lord wants and he's after with our spirit man is for our spirit man to ascend above our senses and our sense knowledge which is our flesh to control it you see whereas in the past what's happened is the flesh or sense knowledge has ascended up over the spirit man and runs him you see so this is the reason why the Lord wants us to continue to meditate in His Word night and day because we've been trained the wrong way. To walk where He wants us to walk as His disciples. Because you see, the enemy that comes against us is sense knowledge. What we see and what we hear. And what is the weapon that we use against sense knowledge? The Word of God. The Word of God. It is written. It is written. Turn with me please to Ephesians chapter 6. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6. You're still with me now? Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. You say, well, Ron, what do you mean by sense knowledge? What do you mean the devil bombards me with his thoughts? It's very simple. What do you think Moses thought when he stood in there on the edge of that cliff looking at the Red Sea? You think the devil wasn't bombarding his mind? Man, we're stuck. Huh? But he didn't go by what he saw or what he heard. He went by the Word of God. He went by the Word of God. Joshua, same thing. Joshua, look at those 25 foot high walls and those walls that were 20 foot thick. He didn't go by what he saw. He didn't go by what he heard. He went by the word of God. The Lord told him, this, this that city have I given into thine hands. You see? <clears throat> Joshua, Moses, all of us, renew our minds. Renew our minds. 